Hey guys and hey garlic man, this is a special high for you. Um, and yeah, um, guys, it is strange. We're waiting for the next event, for the next eruption. So some experts are saying this week and they'd be surprised if it didn't happen this week. But what is actually going on? It's kind of overdue or isn't it? What is that volcano doing? Is the magma doing something else? Is it sneaking away from us and we're not realizing where it's going? And then it's going to surprise us where it's going to come up. There are quite a few news today. And I want to tell you this because there seems to be something going on underneath, although everything looks so nice and calm. So what is happening with the earthquake. So they're saying the seismic activity keeps increasing again. So the news was yesterday that over the last few days, they have measured more earthquakes. They were still not 100% sure if it's really more earthquakes or if it is because the weather got better and their seismic instruments were able to catch the smaller ones again. But uh, it looks like it's real that there are more earthquakes. So 31 earthquakes have been recorded at the magma tunnel, the magma tunnel that has formed on November 10th, 15 kilometers long, basically goes through the Sutnuka crater series down into Grindavik, and we've already seen three eruptions along that magma tunnel. So since midnight, 31 earthquakes along the tunnel and the seismic activity has increased this morning Icelandic time. Um, that is what the Icelandic Meteorological Office, the Met Office has said. One of their natural hazard specialists has said that. So he said his name is Bödvar Svensson and he says that, quote, something is about to happen in the area. So the Met Office has stated yesterday that the total amount in the magma chamber underneath Sword Sangi has exceeded the limits, so the amount of magma that has triggered a magma flow or an eruption in the Sudnuka crater series in the past. So this uh, that's what they're thinking, that this increases the likelihood of a new magma intrusion, a new magma run or an eruption in the coming days. So also yesterday, they have updated their risk assessment. So just because of the latest data that they have, but it is basically unchanged from the last one and it is valid until March 19th if nothing else happens. And they say there has been considerable seismic activity on the Reykjanes Ridge um, in the last 24 hours and that's what's the most interesting is it has not only been like the super micro seismic events, there have been several earthquakes that have been over the magnitude uh, two. So the Met Office says it is kind of normal that we see larger earthquakes from time to time in this area. So it's from what they say, maybe not a direct indication that something is imminent. So Thorold or Thoroldson has given another prediction and he basically is of the opinion the longer time passes, so the longer we're waiting for something to happen, the less likelihood that something is going to erupt. He's a professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland. So he says if there is no eruption within the next few days, it is likely that there is some reluctance in the system to let the magma come to the surface. So something's holding the magma back in that area. So he says, my feeling is that it could go either way, but the longer this goes on, the less likely it is to erupt. It has reached the tolerance limit for what the system can basically hold, right? That magma chamber seems to be really expanded and full. And 
He says, if something doesn't happen in the next two or three days, I think the chances of an eruption will be reduced. And why is it then reduced? And he goes on and he explains this basically that the magma could possibly or is possibly flowing in another fissure that we don't know about somewhere else. Because it could be that the old tunnels, the old fissures that the magma has always used Used to flow towards the Sutnuka crater series and then formed the magma dike, flown into the magma dike, caused these three eruptions, um, that there might be some resistance, that the that the magma there that was left after the last intrusion might have hardened and blocked it like a clogged pipe. So he says if the magma doesn't get up the usual way that it has taken in the past, it is possible that it will enter another crack, another crack that is not visible to us yet, and it will be another path than the path it took on March 2nd. So the last actual eruption that we had was on February 8th and on March 2nd it was just a small intrusion not much magma did flow out of the magma chamber and then the magma chamber was refilling very very quickly so that everyone thought okay this is probably going to last for three four days and then poof we will see an eruption but that was March 2nd we have March 14th now so it is a little bit of unusual and and I think a little bit of a surprise for the scientists as well. So most people were prepared to see a seventh eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula in within the last three years, seven eruptions. So they were waiting for number seven, but nothing so far. And um, so what Thorwald or Thorwaldsen says is that when the magma was going for a magma run, when it was running out of the magma chamber underneath the Swartzengi area, where the power plant and the Blue Lagoon is located, um, it failed to break away through the crust to come to the surface and cause a lava flow and a, an eruption. So, um, that's when scientists started to suspect that this main path, this main magma tunnel that the magma was using to go and cause the eruption on December 18th and on February 8th, and possibly partially on January 14th, they still don't know exactly where that magma was coming from, had failed. It had filled in that fissure segment and basically has created its own clogs. So magma always takes the way of least resistant, the easiest ways. So what he's assuming, in my opinion, is that the magma has filled all these easy available tunnels, fissures, cracks, holes, pathways. It has filled those up and it has hardened now. So it's filled. And so now the magma doesn't have such an easy way to go to the Sutnuka crater series. And the question is, does it have to go to the Sutnuka crater series? And we'll talk about this in a minute. So Thorwaldu says that now there are less open cracks and the magma in these cracks may have become so stiff that it is difficult to get through it. So the Met Office has done some calculations and some modeling, and these models show that the magma accumulation underneath the Swartzengi area continues at the same rate as before. So the March 2nd event has changed nothing. There's still magma flowing into the magma chamber from a deeper magma reservoir. Um, so in the previous events, magma always started to leave the chamber when the chamber had an amount of roughly between 8 and 13 million cubic meters. So there 
saying definitely right now what is in the magma chamber is exceeding the lower limit and i'm a little bit surprised because they have already said days ago that they think there's 10 million cubic meters so we should by now be at least but 13 13 and a half million cubic meters because they kept saying that the magma chamber fills at a rate of about half a million cubic meters per day so i think it already has exceeded did the higher limit so but they're still saying there have been just over 10 million cubic meters of magma and if it goes well over 13 million cubic meters which has been the most that it has had so far um so world Rue says i would interpret that as a sign of inertia in the adaption system that has been letting the magma to the surface so he says if new magma tries to ascend the same path this structure that has formed right now can hold it back and then the magma will try to look for other areas if there is no possible way in the sutnuka crater area area because the magma needs to go somewhere if if it keeps filling up into the magma chamber and the magma chamber has reached the maximum point of elasticity the magma wants to flow out but you know if it it flows a little bit and then it's clogged pressure builds up and then it needs to go somewhere else and that's why they have noticed something and that is interesting they are saying that the land rise that is happening the land keeps rising to the west and what does that mean and that is interesting so maybe an event is not as imminent as we all think and that changes the narrative completely so maybe we're waiting for something that is not going to happen this week maybe it's happening in a few weeks in a few months so there is a volcanologist at the University of Iceland and Arman Höskuldsson. We've heard um, from him quite a bit um, in, the, in the past few months. And he says, we may have to wait until fall, until we see another eruption. And <laughs> so that was his answer to the question whether he thinks that we will see something soon. So he says that he thinks that the volcanic system that we're dealing with right now that has caused the last three eruptions and these two intrusions, that this volcanic system might move west towards Altverb. And that they say that new satellite images show that the land rise is moving west along the peninsula and um, the Icelandic Met Office has a map and I think I want to show you this map because they're showing or they're highlighting the Fagradalsfjall eruptions on this map but it gives you a good location of where everything is and where the Altverb system is so he says I expect this behavior to change um, once the magma is on the move so he basically says, if that is the case, then he thinks we will probably see a longer eruption because in that area, if it flows to Altwerp, it might be easier to, for the magma to go straight up. And he thinks then we will see a longer eruption and maybe a different behavior of the whole volcanic system. So... <sighs> there has been some seismic activity recently in the Fagradalsfjall area the last weeks and months, but um, the land rise that is happening at Fagradalsfjall right now is not of great interest. It's not significant compared to what is happening at Swartzengi. So the land rise at Swartzengi is definitely more significant. So that's why he also says he believes the seismic activity that we're seeing right now is where the two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. So underneath Iceland, the Eurasian plate is moving away from the American plate. Um, so not necessarily maybe a sign that something is erupting or moving. The last eruption in the Fagradalsfjall system was in July 2023. So what he thinks right now is 
because of that is he thinks the Fagradalsfjall system has completely entered the Eurasian plate. And on that map here, the blue line, you can also see this is where the two tectonic plates are separating from each other. And you can really see this if you're in Iceland. There's really like uh, a deep graben or how you'd call that where people if there's water they can swim there's they can walk in there so you really see wow it's like a scar he thinks nothing is, should erupt from Fagradalsfjall in the near future he thinks that system is in a state of being quiet where nothing probably will hit the surface the tectonic stresses that have showed up in this area were released and uh, because of that it has caused the eruptions but now this is over and so definitely <laughs> um, it remains to be seen what is going to happen so if this is happening like this could this mean that there is hope for Grindavik because you know if the pathways to Grindavik are clogged and it's moving west to Altverb, I don't know. They're not saying anything, but, you know, it gives me the indication that this might be a good thing, that maybe Grindavik has a little bit of a relief and it gives them time to look at all the cracks and the underground system really very, very thoroughly and maybe make repairs and maybe revive the town. Maybe it's not like this that every month there's going to be an eruption or something else at the doorsteps of Grindavik. We will have to see. I really hope that the Met Office will relieve, relieve, no, release more data regarding this and a little bit, I know they, they can't say what's going on. They don't really know what's going on. Um, so they don't even know 90% what's going on in my opinion. So um, it's all predictions and, and guessing. It's what they're doing, right? They don't know where the magma is or if it's already flowing somewhere or gradually leaking out from the magma chamber somewhere. So that is very, very interesting, guys. And uh, I'll definitely keep you updated about this. But if you want to hear the latest nonsense from the world, I really urge you to watch that video that I put in the end screen here. Um, Peta wants to swap Easter eggs with potatoes. So they want to replace Easter eggs with potatoes. And they have written the most hilarious letter to Jill Biden urging her at the White House's annual Easter egg roll to use potatoes. And if you hear why and what is their reason and how they write this and what they're saying, you have to shake your head or you have to die laughing because it's such an incredible nonsense, but it's very entertaining. So watch that video, guys. I really urge you. I know it has nothing to do with volcanoes, but if you want a good laugh, um, I'll tell you in the video what's in that letter. So click here, watch it, guys. I'm out of here. I see you soon. Bye-bye.